Hello, welcome. I'm Annika from Black Dream Escape. And I'm Wendy Fire. And today we are talking about strengthening your relationship with your bed. Um, it's an important topic, especially for Black and Indigenous people. So we're just going to talk about how you do that or how might you do it and what ways um, we maintain our relationship with our bed and what it might look like for other people if they were doing the same. And that's about it. So a few things before we start um, that I would like to say is that these, uh, this video in particular is part of a series called Black Breast Thought Pathways. And all month we'll be uploading videos about building a Black Breast practice uh, for yourself. And so Thought Pathways are just um, ideas to seep into your brain and to use as a template for you to do just that, to develop your own Black and Indigenous rest practice um, on your own time. Uh, these are also a special because uh, our set and um, the labor involved is being funded by the Office of Public Art, and so we thank them. And that's about it. When if I did leave anything out? No, I don't think you did. Cool. So before we get into our lullaby, um, we've been doing these for uh, like two months now, and we always um, start with the lullaby and end with the lullaby after the reflection. Um, we, Wendy Fire and I, do our own rest practice when we're doing it intentionally. We focus a lot on hydration, and especially during our like live rest sessions. So I have some hydrating things here that you can't really see in the screen, but um, they're here. So I've got some lotion, bulk lotion. Got some water right here. And I have this pillow too. This is actually on our Society6 page. Um, it says, take the time that you need. And it's very fluffy. And so um, I have that here with me just in case I need to feel something soft. Um, and that's it. So I'm just going to put a little lotion on my hands. A little bit like that. And rub it in. Um, trying to release some of the tension that might be in my hands. Um and just like whoosh that out somewhere. And then I also am um, going to drink some water. Again, hydration important going into this um, rest practice just because we're trying to prevent any distractions, so any itches or any like throat problems. And we also do pre-rest emotional regulation, which just means identifying your feelings and um, kind of figuring out where they're coming from. So right now, I especially feel a little frazzled because this is our second time recording. Um, I, my computer was dying and I had to go get uh, the cord. And then um, also we were just trying to figure out how to like get all these things into um, frame and form some kind of set. So figuring that out, um, I feel a bit frazzled, but centered because I'm outside, the trees are behind me, it's windy, so it's cooling me down. And those are my emotions right now. Windifier, how are you feeling? I'm feeling a little tired today, and mm -hmm. I'm also feeling kind of frazzled. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're going to going to take this slow and um, the topic again strengthening your bed your relationship with your bed is something that I find very interesting and important so I'm um, happy to sit here and talk to um, the ether about it but especially when the fire um, it's nice to be here um, with him especially so when we start our intro lullaby um, I got my ukulele I keep saying that I don't have a like a name for her and I don't yet so I haven't thought about one. But here we go. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we always say um, before oh. or like during um, oh, oh, our best practices oh, is that oh, oh, oh. Hold on, let me <laughs> so one thing we always say <laughs> um, about uh, rest is that like rest is always possible and um, rest is always possible especially in the midst of chaos and somebody just like came around my back alley uh, just like walking and my dogs feel away about it so um, that'll end soon but we always say that like rest Even in the midst of chaos is possible. So you might hear some background noise. Um, I think the the person like walking is not going to be walking anymore. But um, we always encourage folks to go back into themselves. And even though that might be a distraction, um, I want to be outside and I, I want to kind of breathe in this fresh air. And it just so happens that my dogs are out with me. So um, there is some background noise. Uh, especially it might be some in, in like in your life too. But again, come back into yourself. Um, wait until it's over and um, feel your feelings as we go along. Um, and that's like the disclaimer. We always like to fit on these. Uh, so Wendifier, um, what do you think is like your initial thought about strengthening your relationship with your bed just for other people? Mm -hmm. Well, I have a very animistic view of the world. So my initial thoughts are that I feel like it's very good to to strengthen the relationship with the spirit of your bed. Because um, I believe that everything, including inanimate, uh, inanimate objects, has a spirit. Um, I feel like strengthening the relationship with your bed is very important because your bed is a very... I mean, it should be a very uplifting thing. I feel your bed should really support you in, you know, your resting, in your traveling to different dimensions. Um, when you're when you're feeling down, I feel like like your bed should be like that. And sometimes it isn't, but yeah. How do you feel? I agree with what you said. I think that it um, there's a, a kind of relationship with your bed that um, needs to be in place, but it doesn't always happen like that. And when I first think about um, like strengthening your relationship, I think about the, the deficit that might be there or the, the suffering, the pain. And that thought came to me in a consultation with Dr. Jennifer Malena, Decolonizing Therapy. And just thinking about the trauma involved with um, bedrooms and bedtime. Uh, a lot of us have some deep, serious, um, again, suffering around that particular spot in our house, um, whether it be from our childhood or as adults. So there's some repairing and reconciling that needs to happen before we start um, really finding beds or bedroom as like a place of respite. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess, Windifier, when we're thinking about the actual strengthening, what do you think um, is like a key part to that strength or like maintaining that relationship? And uh, I'm wondering too, like specifically spiritually, what does that mean? Or if we're strengthening our relationship with our bed spiritually, what does that look like? Mm, I feel like um, strengthening your relationship with your bed. Um, for me, what, what it's like is, I don't know, sometimes I whisper, whisper thoughts into my bed. I, I hug my bed, you know, really feel it supporting me and me, you know, hugging it back. Um, I don't know, a really important practice. I mean, or I mean, a practice that's used in a lot of, of African diasporic traditions is putting a, um, a glass of water at the foot or head of your bed um, and just leaving it there for any disturbances that could happen in the night in your sleep. Um, I feel like that's very important to do for you, but I also feel like it's really important just to 
do other things for for your um to do things for your bed as well. I feel like it's important to to give your bed a little offerings like um you know maybe once in the while in a while I don't know maybe draping something on your bed frame draping something over over your bed you know getting a new pillow that you really like for your bed um leaving a little bit of cornmeal or something for your bed a little offering for your bed um giving it some some herbs that are encouraging to rest like lavender or other things you know i feel like that that's a good way to strengthen your relationship with your bed spiritually what are you what do you feel that was wonderful yeah i think um i think of like the more um emotional side um just you know thinking about uh cleanliness and how important that is to any practice of like any um, emotional or spiritual practice, but especially when it comes to your bed, um, making sure that your bed uh, is void of things that probably could be elsewhere, like clothes or electronics or like your work. You know, sometimes like if you are in school, papers end up there. Um, and so protecting it against all those things um, so it can continually symbolize a place of rest for you. And I think that's like the first step also to like make sure that your sheets are clean as often as you can. A lot of mental health disorders prevent us from doing that regularly. Um, depression comes to mind first, anxiety um, or like anxiety disorders that comes to mind second. And so even though the practice would be nice if we did that like once, a week, um, like changing our pillow uh, covers and our sheets. Um, just trying to remember as often as you can that that is something that um, would make your bed more hospitable. Um, it's just important. And again, however often you can do it. But I think that's like the first step um, in like emotionally strengthening and all the other steps that um, Linda Fryer mentioned too like strength, you know, really like um, grounding um, that connection, that like place in your home. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, uh, I guess I feel like another thing is that um, I feel like a good way to strengthen your relationship with your bed as well. Um, again, on, on the spiritual side is recognizing your bed as more than a place of, of sleeping, um, more than a place of dreaming. Um, I feel like that's a very good way to, to, um, to strengthen your relationship is recognizing how it's a lot more than just a place for you to, to sleep um, and realizing so much that happens with sleep. Um, and with that bed. Um, a common practice that people do in Hoodoo um, is that if you're learning something um, and you're kind of struggling with the subject, um, something that you can do is you can put, um, you can put the book that you're studying from underneath your pillow and sleep with it at night. Um, and I feel like that really speaks to to your bed and how your bed is much more than, than just a place to sleep, you know? Um, and how sleeping is much more than it seems. Um, I don't know, I feel like sleeping, sleeping a lot of the times is restful. It's a lot of the times what people think of when they think of rest, but I feel like sleeping also can be very it can be very unrestful um, because you can have lots of nightmares or you can have very just intense dreams where you don't get much rest. And I feel like recognizing that your bed, you don't have to sleep in your bed for it to be rest. Um, you can just lay down um, in your bed, you know, feeling it. I love laying underneath the covers in my bed because I just feel like I'm, I'm underwater and in the ocean and it feels really nice. So, yeah. 
Yeah, that also makes me think of um, how um, we can expand the understanding of bed. So bed doesn't always have to be, um, or your rest space, of course, doesn't always have to be the mattress with the sheets and the blanket, um, especially because a lot of us haven't had the luxury of having our own bed and our own bedroom. Um, you know, some of us have had to grow up on a couch sleeping on that, um, sleeping on the floor. Um, even in our adult lives, there might have been a time where um, bed was anywhere we could just lay down for the night. And I don't think that is necessarily um, a problem um, when it comes to thinking about strengthening our relationship with our bed, because um, it can be a flexible definition. If again, a same like I was talking about with the uh, resting and chaos and um, our philosophy of not avoiding that, you know, especially when we do these videos. Whoa, whoa. Whoop, barking. Especially when we do these videos, trying to um, present to you all that um, like chaos can be happening and we can still go along. Whoa. Same with um, finding a bed space and that even if you are in tumultuous times in your life or you have to share a bed and you don't really want to, there are other ways um, to think about what a bed could look like. So if you can't, and even if all of your needs are met and you have a bed, but you can't get to it because you're stuck on the couch, uh, weighted down by grief, or you're on your bed, your bathroom floor from crying, or something of that nature, you're away from your bed, um, where you are in that moment can be your bed. You, I think, could think about what makes a bed for you. Is it the mattress or is it like your hand and you being able to lay down in a small space? Is it a pillow and that's all you need? Um, I think really focusing on the root of bed um, is essential because we can't always get to the like actual bed space. So it's important to think about how that can show up in your life when you need it, when you can't get to like the the actual space. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Yeah. 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 I think the strength too um, with uh, our relationships with our bed is knowing that um, it is a, a place that needs protected and yeah. Like um, when I was saying earlier about like acknowledging inanimate objects, even though your bed, you know, might not like have sentience where it can appreciate the protection, still thinking about how you can protect that relationship by again, um, making sure you are keeping your bed clean, that um, in any way, any space that you find that you are laying down and you're considering your bed, um, that you are keeping it to your liking. And that's one way of protection. And um, in that way, helping this concept of bed know that you, know, you are serious about your rest and you're serious about your relationship and your connection to it. What do you think about that, Linda Fire? Yeah, um, I think that's, ah, my mind just went into the ether, away from here. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that that's, that's really great, yeah. I feel like, yeah, a acknowledging, a acknowledging it is great, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you said, cleaning is great. Cleaning is an amazing thing to do for your bed. Um, and I feel like that that should be a part of your part of your your, your routine, um, spiritual and otherwise. Because I always believe that the best spiritual cleaning is first physical cleaning. If you have a messy space, um, it's good to physically clean it first before you spiritual clean it. Um, and that's a good way to get rid of all the the negative energies that you might be feeling or that might be there. And I feel like it's good to 
to acknowledge the entity of the entity that is bed, like you said, because you know sometimes not it's not always a bed. Um, I feel like it's very good to to acknowledge the the entity of of bed and to I don't know. It's, I feel like it's always good to be grateful. Um, you know, things can be really bad. You know, resting in certain places can be really bad and not the best of places to rest. You know, sometimes the cat, I mean, yeah, a couch can, can feel not too great. Um, it can feel not too great um, being crowded in with, with other people inside of a bed. Um, the floor definitely does not feel great. Um, but I feel like it's always grateful to be, to, um, or it's always, it's always good to be grateful, um, even if the circumstances aren't the best. Like it's, the, the place where you're resting isn't the best, but at least sometimes it's a secure place, a place where you won't be eaten by predators or other th um, the likes. I mean, eaten by like animal predators, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good point uh, that even when whenever you can rest or figure out um, a way to do that, that um, in that moment, um, recognizing the way in which you carved out any amount of safety for yourself um, is something to, like when the fire is saying, acknowledge and be grateful for it to yourself. Give yourself that grace that um, even if, um, if you happen to find this video and right now you are a person who is without a home, who is homeless, even in the moments that you can find um, to sleep somewhere or you're couch surfing or something like that, um, your ability to find that space, even if it's for like a half an hour in your transient, um, is something to celebrate and again, give yourself gratitude for, because especially in that kind of chaos, it's extremely difficult. Um, almost impossible. So you being able to do it is wonderful. Um, and like Windifier is saying, giving yourself that gratitude is important because when we're talking about strengthening our relationship with our bed, we want to make sure that um, internally that um, like bed is home, bed is us, you know, it's like um, something, again, like we're consistently saying, something that doesn't have to mean the mattress and the sheets, but that like it's a place of respite and that can be within you. So you are always with you on your body while you're walking around, you're always available. So <laughs> meeting because of barking, um, your body is there with you. So you as respite as home can be um, in some ways, like metaphorically your bed um, and again, Giving that gratitude and that ability is wonderful and an important practice, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if I have anything more. Do you? No. I guess um, just to kind of recap, we've been like the general themes of what we've been talking about is that when you're strengthening your relationship with your bed, um, keeping it clean in whatever way you can is important. Um, understanding the root meaning of uh, what bed might mean to you. And uh, we talked about that being especially important if you are a person who is transient and your life is in a particular kind of chaos and you don't have a bedroom um, to yourself or you don't have a bed, um, it's still possible and it's possible in the way that um, you can. That's my dog crying because he wants a ball. 
So, <laughs> so thinking about um, just again, especially, especially in chaos, thinking about what bed could mean for you because it's still a possibility, even if again you don't have the mattress and the things that other people have. You know, um, I think that's important. I definitely want to put that in um, to people's brains because um, throughout my youth, um, I'm 30 now, there were a lot of times where I did not have like a typical bed, but I was still able to um, rest when I was intentional about it because I took the time to think about what um, the bed could look like for me as um, like thinking about how my body can be respite and um, what places I can find respite and being creative about it. Um, and that, I think that's like the general theme that of what strengthening your relationship with your bed is all about. And we also acknowledge the trauma that could come um, with thinking about bed and bed space and um, also being able to acknowledge that and taking time, being slow with Strengthening that relationship is uh, also important. Um, any other final thoughts, Wonderfire? I don't think I have any. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's our take. That's what we'd like to offer. This is episode one of Black Rest Thought Pathways. Um, again, thank you for being patient with the noise, but we also try not to avoid those things because um, resting in chaos, especially for black and indigenous people is something that we have to learn to do. And um, it's a particular skill that um, I think is just like important for us to remember. So on that note, um, Windfire, I'm gonna mute. And if you would like to lead us out with a lullaby. I will do that, um, yes. So like Annika said, we're gonna end this with a lullaby. This is called, you can, uh, rest will come. <laughs> um, so yeah, here it is.
Okay. That was You Can Rest. Thank you for listening to us. We hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for going through the thought pathway with us. Thank you, Wendy Fire. And thank you all. Um, see you next Wednesday. Yeah. See you next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.